When I'm not working in my studio, I still do a lot of live sound work. And while there's a lot of carryover, I think, when it comes to mixing, that is the same between working in a studio and working in live sound. Live sound definitely has some unique challenges. One of those challenges is microphone bleed. And mic bleed, it can be an issue in the studio for sure. But these days, most of the stuff we're recording is pretty heavily isolated. When I'm doing live sound, though, it is not unusual at all that I have a drum kit, you know, 10 feet away from a vocal mic. And that drummer might just be going for it. So I am going to have a certain amount of drums in my vocal mics. Another issue that we have to contend with in live sound is microphone feedback. In the studio, sure, you can have mic feedback, but generally it only happens when you kind of screw up. Here though, in live sound, I am always trying to get a certain amount of gain or a certain amount of level out of open microphones before they will go into feedback. There is always sort of a fixed ceiling for that in any system. And there are some things we can do to kind of increase our amount of gain before feedback, but it's definitely one of the challenges. Now, fortunately, my friends at Waves have created some tools that are great for addressing these very unique challenges. And they reached out to me and asked if I could talk a little bit about some of the differences between them. So that's what I'm gonna do today. So let's start with mic bleed. So what's the deal with mic bleed? Why can this be so problematic? For me, the big issue is it has a tendency to hurt the clarity of things. So I like to clean up my vocals as much as I possibly can. And one of the first tools I turn to is the Waves PSE. And the PSE is the primary source expander. The way you can think about this is it's sort of like a gate that is really fine tuned for the voice. The attack and release envelope works really great on vocals and there are some other tools in there so that we can really tailor how it interacts with the bleed that's coming in so that the bleed from like a snare drum, for example, isn't necessarily going to open this gate we have on the vocals. So that's a lot of times the first thing I turn to. Another advantage of the PSE is it can help with feedback. A lot of times when we are fighting with feedback on a microphone, the times when the mic takes off the most is when nobody is singing or nobody is speaking. And this is especially true if we have any kind of compression on that microphone. When they stop singing, that makeup gain is going to just start bringing the level up on that signal. Well, if we've got the PSE in there, we can set that so that it turns it down a little bit to kind of compensate for that. And a lot of times with the PSE, I might set it for 6 dB, sometimes 10 dB of reduction on a really loud and challenging stage, but I'm not necessarily trying to eliminate all of the bleed. I'm just trying to reduce it to a level that is manageable and that helps sort of clean up and clear up the mix and make it a great experience for everybody who's in the room. Now, when it comes to feedback, Waves has a couple of really tailor-made tools for dealing with feedback. And the first one is X Feedback, and the second one is Feedback Hunter. Both of these plugins, they operate in a similar way in that they use equalization to reduce frequencies that are going to start feeding back, but the way they go about finding those frequencies is very different. Both of these plugins, they're best used before you have a show or a service. X feedback in a pinch you can use in the middle of a performance, but in my opinion, it's best to use it ahead of time. So X feedback works by detecting feedback. It detects the resonances and then it notches those frequencies out. This is something we used to do with graphic equalizers. We would 
take our microphones on stage, we would get them ringing, and then you would notch those frequencies out on your graphic equalizer. X feedback is awesome because it's far more accurate and it just does it automatically. Why make your work harder if you've got a tool that can do the job better and faster? Now, the trouble for me with X feedback is you have to push a microphone into feedback to get it to work. And pushing a mic into feedback intentionally, if you have a client or an artist or a producer for an event, if they're in the room, it doesn't necessarily inspire confidence in your abilities when you push something into feedback. So this is something I like to do when I can kind of get the room to myself. It's also something I don't like to do when a lot of other people are around because, you know, even for people who understand how this works, I mean, nobody likes listening to feedback. So ideally, I use X feedback ahead of time when I really want to get surgical on knocking out feedback. Feedback Hunter works a little differently from X feedback. Feedback Hunter listens to a test signal. It's a white noise signal that you play through your monitors or your PA. And then X feedback creates a custom EQ curve for that microphone that is kind of based on the frequencies it believes are going to feedback more. Since X feedback uses a test signal, you have to do this before your show. The thing I find with Feedback Hunter that can be a little disconcerting at first is a lot of times it looks like it's doing a lot. I was a little skeptical the first time I used it because when I looked at the curve, it looked like it was doing a lot. I mean, it looked like it was just overall doing broadband reduction and maybe it was, but what I do know is that the microphone I ran it on was very stable after I ran it. So if I lose a little bit of signal in the process, but my microphone ends up even more stable in the end and sounds better in the room, I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of gain when I can overall get that back at the fader side of things or at the head amp in order to kind of have this curve that works so well. Feedback Hunter also has some controls in it that allow you to kind of put some of that back if you do feel like it's doing too much. I would caution against listening with your eyes on this one. If it does happen to be a situation where it's taking too much signal out, then yeah, maybe you want to reduce how much work it's actually doing in the processing. But, you know, really listen with your ears because if the end result is a more stable microphone for you, who doesn't want that? I mean, to me, that's a win. And I'll take a little bit of gain loss if the overall result is better. And it's something that I can make up just on the channel, turning it up a little bit at the fader or you know, maybe even driving a more signal into it at the head amp as needed. So depending on how your gain structure is set up, you might be able to do something like that. So I hope that helps explain some of the tools that Waves has for us to use in live sound for dealing with the challenges of mic bleed and mic feedback. If you've got questions about these, please leave a comment below. If there's other live sound stuff you want me to talk about, you know, let me know. I put it on my list of things to make videos about. So thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.